Hello, lovely humans, Jen Foxbot here. In this video, we are continuing our investigation into the mathematics of neural networks, which are the underpinnings of generative AI. Yeah, so cool. So this video covers the cost function for neural networks. So far, what we have done is we have looked at like what a neural network is from a high level perspective, that kind of like beginner friendly intro. Uh, and also, why do we need neural networks? Why can't we just do everything with regression and all that fun stuff? Um, so, so we did that. And then uh, we looked at how to write a small neural network. And then we generalized that to kind of however architecture we want to build with. So now we actually need to talk about, OK, well, we've looked at the architecture. How do we actually like fill in some numbers? and get a neural network that can actually make reasonable predictions on a given data set. So to do that, we need a way to measure the accuracy um, of our predictions. And so that is what we are doing today. So cost function, that's where it comes in from. Um, and if you're like, but wait, I watched the other machine learning videos. We have an equation for the cost function, don't we? Well, yes. OK, so let's take a look at that. OK, so for our previous cost function, what our cost function does is it helps us to measure how accurate our predicted values are from the actual training values. So let's say we have a data set where we have like, oh, yeah, look at my cool little plotted points. Um, and then I want to use that to make a prediction line. And so I get my fancy green line over here, and I'm like, cool, that's pretty accurate, right? And you're like, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, but let's actually measure how accurate our predicted values are compared to the actual data set. So we will measure the distance from the line, like this point, the distance between our um, predicted values on the green line and the actual values, which are our little x's, because I'm a good mathematician, I'm going to label my axes x and y. Um, so this is a pretty good prediction line. And if you wanted to see if you could make a better one, you would just, ooh, let's use a different color. Oh, yeah, red, why not? Um, you would do the same thing for a different line. You would calculate the distance for each of the points. And then you would compare the cost function, um, basically the differences between all of the points and the predicted values. Um, and then you could compare and figure out which one is better, right? Super cool. So why can't we use the equation that we did for that? Um, well, good question, hypothetical viewer. We are dealing with uh, logarithms now, right? Okay, we have a different we have a different formula, and so our and our predictions fall in a different scale. Um, specifically, we are using the sigmoid function, which looks like this. I can draw it kind of terrible every time. Bear with me. Okay, so this value where it levels out on the uh, positive side of the x-axis is 1. It crosses the x-axis around 1 half. One half. Uh, is it not to scale? It's fine. Um, and then uh, in the negative direction, it levels out at 0. So we can't really, all of our, all of our data sets are going to be somewhere on this line. So our, our training values are going to be over here. So we need a way to compare, uh, let's say our, I did, I did the opposite thing. Okay, well, <laughs> so orange can be our predicted values. And let's say our actual values are something like this. So we need a way to compare the distance on this kind of uh, sigmoid function. So we need a different cost function. All right, cool. Hopefully I've convinced you. Um, the good news is that we don't have to invent the cost function. We can just take what other smart people did. Yay. But I think it's important to understand why we do the things that we do. All right. So the other thing that I want to cover before we get into writing the actual cost function is um, let's get another pretty color. I used orange. Orange got some love. Uh, let's use purple. OK. So I'm going to draw a sample architecture of a made up neural network. OK. So because I like to be lazy, I'm just going to use some circles. And let's say we have a few different layers. Um, each of these circles represents a, a neuron or artificial neuron in our neural network. OK. 
And then uh, I'm going to label these. Uh, so this is layer one. This is layer two. Or I'm going to say L because I'm lazy. This is layer three. This is layer four. And then that is the output layer, or in this case, layer five. Okay, so there are two different types of classification problems that we can do with neural networks. In this example, we have one output, huzzah, so we get one result, either a one or a zero, binary, one of two choices. So in this case, y equals zero or one. That's it. But we could also have multi classification. Hey, look at that. So we could have an output that um, uh, gives us one of four possible outcomes. So for example, this might, this output might be like, oops, if zero, one, zero, zero, um, I should say y equals this, or it could also be zero, one, zero, zero, or it could be uh, you just move the, the one down and put zeros in the other places. So it could be one of those, it could be four different possibilities uh, where each of these nodes are turned on. Covered in chuck. Excellent. Um, so that is multi class classification. It doesn't have to be four. Um, you could have k number of um, outputs or k number of um, yeah, output units. Okay, and this is where I'm going to grab my notes. Um, okay, so. Uh, we need to write down some variables. So uh, you could have k number output units. Sorry, that got a little smushed. <laughs> okay, so we could have k number of output units. We could also have um, different numbers of layers. So L equals number layers number of layers. Okay, fine, 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 fine. Um, we could, and then we also have, um, we have SL. Um, sorry, our units are kind of, let me do this. Okay, our variables are smushing into our architecture. Um, okay, so S subscript L is the number of units, basically, um, these little circle friends, yay, <laughs> okay, number of units, not counting the bias unit, because remember, there's like a theta zero up here, ignore that for now, um, la, 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 la. in number of units in layer L, and I'm going to write subscript L, because that's a little easier to distinguish between one, um, Cool. Okay, so so for example, um, in our architecture in layer one, S L equals three. Cool. What is it in layer two? The number of units in a given layer. Eh, come on, you know, you're smart. Yeah, cool. It's five. Um, same thing for this layer, S L equals five, and then S L is four here. Okay, cool. Um, is that it? Oh, one more thing. Um, and then we also are going to have a training data set. And so we're going to have M, um, equals number of training data points. Okay, cool. Okay. I'm trying to, I'm trying to organize my chalkboard here. These equations are going to be long. All right. So let's write down our cost function for, um, for binary classification. So where k equals one, we just have one output layer. Okay, so it is going to be j of theta, yas. Okay, we're gonna divide uh, by the number of training examples and add a little minus sign there. And then we are going to multiply by a summation. And I am going to try and uh, be smart about this. And actually, maybe I'm going to move this down a little bit. Okay, because this is going to be a big equation. All right, so let's try this again. J of theta, and I'll try and get out of the way. Can y'all see? Okay, cool, 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 cool. Equals negative 1 over m. And then we are going to add a summation. Mm, yeah. 
So we're going to sum over all of our training data. So from 1 to M, from our first training data point to our last training data point. Um, and then we are going to multiply by um, Y, by the particular um, actual training output. So remember, we have a number of pairs of like X to the 1 and Y1. Uh, so this is going to be an input and that's going to be an output. Um, all the way up to x to the m and y to the m. So this is our known data. This is how we train our neural network. Um, and then we're going to multiply by log of our prediction. So h theta of x for that uh, training data set. And then we are going to add plus 1 minus y, uh, that particular um, training data output, and then multiply by the log of 1 minus our prediction for that particular x. Whoopsies, I'm just going to do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then that is our sum, so we do that. And then we are also going to add in um, a regularization. Uh, we have a scaling factor, lambda, uh, and we're going to divide by 2 times our training data, number size of training data set. Oh my goodness. Okay, hold on. I've written too many summation signs. My hand refuses to cooperate. Okay, so we're going to um, sum up over the total number of um, parameters, and then we are going to square them. Um, and basically this just like helps to scale all that good stuff, but we are going to skip the bias. Uh, we're going to skip our little uh, bias parameter, uh, which is always equal to one. So we don't want to regularize that. It's already regularized. It's already one. Okay. So boom, it looks a little scary, but it's really just plug and chug. Um, you get your numbers, you have your, your training data set, um, and then you just sum over this and really you would write this in code. Uh, you're not a physics major. You're not going to do this by hand. Um, <laughs> so you'd write this in code and then you just kind of let the summation run over that equation. Cool. Okay. Not so bad, right? Um, rad. Now we apply this to the situation where we have multi-class classification or where we have multiple outputs. Um, and really all that we're going to do is just make sure that we sum over each of our, um, parameters. Okay, cool. Well, each of our each of our predicted and actual values, um, our hypothesis function outputs, that is our predicted values, and then the actual values, which is from our training data set. So we just want to make sure that we uh, find the distance between those two on a, a logistic regression. Did I say that right? I said it wrong during practice. <laughs> anyway, okay. Um, yeah, so we're finding the distance between those two, um, uh, and then we are um, just summing up over all of the training data. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So less talking, more mathing. All right, so now this is multi-class. I'm going to add these in some colors. Fun. Okay. So we're going to sum up over all of the layers, um, all of our output units. So from K equals 1 to capital K. That's a capital K, trust me. Um, and then we're going to add a K here because we have to do it for each of the output layers. And then same, we're going to just add a little K there to indicate that you just, you do this four times. Cool. Not so bad. And then we do a little K there. Okay. Um, but then we also are going to have to sum up over a few more parameters. So we are going to add instead of j equals 1, we sum up over the layers. So from L equals 1 to all of the different layers. And then for each layer, we have multiple nodes, right? Okay, so we have to sum up over each node in each layer. So if we're in layer 1, we need to add another sum, which I'll get my little handy dandy cute orange out. Um, and so we're going to sum from, this, this is a different I, okay? I'm just going to be lazy and use the same subscript. Uh, but it is going to run from uh, the first node all the way down to the last node, which we learned is 
S. We're going to represent with S of L the number of units in a particular layer. And then finally, we are going to sum up over all of the units in that little circle. So maybe there's lots of smiley faces in here, and then you have to sum up over all the smiley faces. And by smiley faces, I mean parameters. There's, a, there's multiple parameters in each node. It's kind of like zooming in. You keep zooming in. Um, so for this, we're going to sum up for, over all of the, the different units in that. OK. Um, and then we're going to do uh, capital theta. Oops, that's what I forgot to do. Capital theta, because we have a matrix theta now. Yes. OK, and then j comma i for each layer. And then again, we're going to square this little buddy. OK, cool, 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 cool. So that's pretty much it. Um, couple of notes. So our hypothesis function, our predicted values are going to um, have a size of, uh, it's going to be a kth dimensional vector. So it depends on the number of output units. Okay, that makes sense. Um, the double sum here adds up the logistic regression costs calculated for each cell in the output layer. Cool, right? Because if we have four possible predicted outputs, we need to calculate the dis how accurate our um, predictions are compared to the actual values for each of those four possible outputs. The triple sum down here adds up the squares of all the individual parameters in the whole network. A lot of parameters. This is how these LLMs get huge, right? Okay. Lots of smiley faces um, and maybe some sad faces. Uh, and yeah, so like I, I made a note when I was writing it, but the I is different uh, than this sum because we're in a different sum. It means a different thing. Uh, cool. Okay. Cool and QED. And I'm making up words sometimes when I smush them together. All right. So that is the cost function. Again, lug and chug. And especially when you have, when you can write it in code, it makes it a lot easier. But I personally like to write it in math because that's how I learned a lot of this stuff. And so it's easier for me to understand things in math before I convert them to code. Maybe you're different anyway. You're here, so we're doing it my way. Uh, awesome. Okay, please let me know if you have any questions about uh, the cost function or what we have covered in neural networks so far. What we are going to look at now uh, that we can actually measure the efficacy of our neural network, um, we're going to look at an algorithm for how we actually train a neural network. What does that look like? How would we write this in code to start to get some of these parameters? Um, and now that we can figure out how accurate our results are, how do we, how do we update that to make it better? Um, a little teaser, it's called backpropagation. Hey. All right, cool. Thanks very much for watching, friends, and I will see you next time. Bye.